Alachanji. Please sing along. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Varadhari Adhamadha Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalla Bhagiri Varadhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavala Bhagi Vivaradhari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabhagi Rivaradhari Ya Shodananda Nabraja Jana Ranjana Ya Shodananda Nabraja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Jai Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Shri Radhe Jai Radha Kalachanji Radha Kalachanji Shri Radhe Jai Jai Prabhupada, 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 Jai Prabhupada. Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad. Shri Shri Radha Kalajanji Bhagwan ki Shri Shri Gaur Natai ki jai. This mic is amazing. It makes you humble all the time. It is wrong. <laughs> Too proud a little. Goes faster now. So welcome to what class do we have today? Bhagavatam? The Srimad Bhagavatam class. Um, welcome His Grace Kripa Moya Prabhu. Would you like to speak, Prabhu? We can, you can speak from your heart. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I will. Uh, maybe you can give him a few tomatoes or something. If I go wrong, he can throw at me so that he does it. <laughs> um, so we will be now um, <clears throat> reciting a few prayers. <clears throat> Please repeat. 
this one together. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya The remaining prayers will chant together, I believe, yes? So please, <coughs> together, everyone. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudire Nashta Praeshva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki Om Magyanati Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Shunmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the thought light of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. All right, that's it. As far as prayers, so, okay. So what on which word can I? You know, we are three, twenty-six, twenty-four. Even even that doesn't want to like stop it. <laughs> Devotion is it glories of devotional service, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Which is, what are the few verses? So let's read really quickly. I think uh, <coughs> Mike is around here someplace. Mike Prabhuki. After the Supreme Personality of Godhead impregnates material nature with his internal potency, material nature delivers the sum total of the cosmic intelligence, which is known as Hiranya Maya. This takes place in material nature when she is agitated by the destinations of the conditioned souls. Okay, so who's the son of material nature? Yeah, that he delivers, right? I mean, that's it. When someone gets born, you know, baby is delivered. So, Hiranyamaya is delivered. When Supreme Personality of God it impregnates material nature. Yes, which is also the sum total of cosmic intelligence. Pretty impressive. All right, we can talk about that later. But yeah, let's go. Thus, after manifesting <coughs> dedicatedness, the effulgent Mahatattva, which contains all the universes within itself, which is the root of all cosmic manifestations and which is not destroyed at the time of annihilation, swallows the darkness that covered the effulgence at the time of dissolution. Okay, let's meditate on this a little bit. Okay, that's after manifesting variegatedness, the effulgent Mahatattva. So I believe Hiranyamaya first manifests variegatedness. Is that what it is? Saying the effulgent Mahatattva, which contains all the universes within itself. So this Hiranyamaya, Mahatattva, it first manifests variegatedness. Variegatedness, variety, different varieties. Um, contains all the universes within itself, which is the root of all cosmic manifestations, and which is not destroyed at the time of annihilation. So this Mahatattva manifests this universes, but the Mahatattva at the time of annihilation is still around and it swallows the darkness that covered the effulgence at the time 
of dissolution. Can you can you wrap your mind around it? <laughs> At the time of annihilation, yes. Um, at the time of dissolution, there is an effulgence. Hmm? From the Mahatattva, all the universe emer emerges, and then there is an effulgence at the time of dissolution. There is not darkness. Yes. It's almost as if the whole universe got catches on fire or something. So there is an effulgence at the time of dissolution, and maybe we can get a little bit more insight in Srila Prabhupada's purpose if there is any. But it swallows that darkness. So this Mahatattva comes in and it swallows the darkness um, that covers the effulgence at the time of dissolution. So there is some darkness. What do, what do they call them? Black matter? Something like that? Dark matter? Dark matter, whatever. <laughs> Pick a name for it, right? So it swallows, this darkness is there after the dissolution. It, it's covered this nice effulgence. Um, so how should we read this? Swallows the darkness that covered the effulgence at the time of dissolution. So should we read it this way, I think? I think there is effulgence, and during the time of dissolution, the darkness shows up. Is that what it is saying? You want, you want, to, you want to look at the purport little, real quick? See what Srila Prabhupada is saying. Purport ki jai, if there is anything. Srila Prabhupada, please, please, please. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Without the purpose, we have finished. Since, Since the Supreme... Who said that? Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is ever-existing, all blissful and full of knowledge, His different energies are also ever-existing in the dormant stage. Thus, when the Mahatattva was created, it manifested the material ego and swallowed up the darkness. So, this manifestation of the different varieties is the material ego. Phenomenal, huh? Srila Prabhupada is so phenomenal. Yes. There's this material ego, which is the source of variegatedness, is the first thing that happened, and swallowed up the darkness which covered the cosmic manifestation at the time of dissolution. So the cosmic manifestation is effulgent. And at the time of dissolution that is covered, and the Mahatattva, when it shows up, it swallows up the darkness. This idea can be further explained. A person at night remains inactive, covered by the darkness of night. But when he is awakened in the morning, the covering of night or the forgetfulness of the sleeping state disappears. Similarly, when the Mahatattva appears after the night of dissolution, the effulgence is manifested, so the darkness is removed to exhibit the variegatedness of this material world. Phenomenal. Yes. Srila Prabhupada has cleared every doubt. Yes. Srila Prabhupada ki? Okay. Who's next? The mode of goodness, which is clear, so our status of understanding the personality of Godhead, and which is generally called Vasudeva, or consciousness become manifest in the Mahatattva. All right, the first mode that shows up is the mode of goodness. The false ego is there now, right? And then the first thing that shows up is the mode of goodness, which is the clear, sober status of understanding. So anything after that is going to be drunk. <laughs> yes. And it is, it is the state where we can have a possibility of understanding the Supreme Personality of God. After the minute, after the manifestation of the Mahatattva, these features appear simultaneously as water in its nature's natural state before coming in contact with earth is clear, sweet, and unruffled. So the characteristic traits of pure consciousness are complete Serenity, clarity, and freedom from distraction. Serenity, clarity, and freedom from cell phones. I mean, sorry, distractions. 
Yeah, so um, um, these features appear simultaneously. Um, what features? Can you, can you go down a little bit, see what, what features? No, 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 I'm saying in the, in the purport. Let's just see what features uh, manifest simultaneously. Let's just uh, quickly. Um, so the pure state of consciousness or Krishna consciousness exists in the beginning, just after creation. Consciousness is not polluted, all right? The more one becomes materially contaminated, however, the more consciousness becomes obscured. In pure consciousness, one can perceive a slight reflection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As in clear and agitated water, free from impurities, one can see everything clearly. So in pure consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one can see things as they are. One can see the reflection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and one can see his own existence as well. Okay. All right. Not, not much on uh, what that uh, different features are, but I, I think they might be serenity, clarity. These features appear simultaneously. Okay. Uh, okay. The material ego springs up from the Mahatattva which evolved from the Lord's own energy. The material ego is endowed predominantly with the active power of three kinds, good, passionate, and ignorant. It is from these three types of material ego that the mind, the senses of perception, the organs of action, and the gross elements evolve. Right. Right, so the material ego has primarily three characteristics, or rather it is manifest in three different ways, and we call them the three modes. Um, is it in good, passion, or ignorance? And then from these <coughs> come the mind, the senses, the organs of action, yes, and the gross elements, um, which are you know, five primary gross elements, right? Bhumi, Rapo, Nalova, you come. So that's five, the organs of action that are, um, I mean, it just talks about organs of action, so, but there are knowledge acquiring and actually performing, work performing uh, senses, if I may. So that's 10 plus the different senses, five, the mind, and doesn't talk about the intelligence, but the mind is in the mode of goodness, whether you like it. That's pretty powerful, thank you. The intelligence is in the mode of passion. passion. Comes out of the mode of passion. And then the senses are, the gross elements are all ignorance. But yeah, so from the Mahatattva, which evolved from the Lord's own energy, the material ego comes out, and then the material ego is endowed. It's the endowment fund. There's three different things good, passion, ignorance, right? And from that, the mind senses everything comes out. All right, so we are within this verse. We have pretty much understood how the creation happens. No big bangs around here, right? Let's keep moving. This will be the focus. This the focus verse. Okay, read a little bit more. The threefold ahankara, the source of the gross elements, the senses, and the mind, is identical with them because it is their cause. It is known by the name sankarshana who is directly Lord Ananta, with a thousand heads. Threefold Ahankara, the source of the gross elements, the senses and the mind, is identical with that, because it is their cause. It is very, <coughs> a, a very uh, interesting point, the Vedantists talk about it, essentially. Um, so Ahankar, what does Ahankar mean? Anyone want to split that up? Yeah, yeah, that's false ego. Yes, false ego. But ahankar, what is aham? And karta? 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 Kara? I am the doer. Yes, that's ahankar. Right? This whole idea that I am the doer, yes, this threefold ahankar. So the, the primary characteristics of the material ego is that I am the doer. Yes. 
It's a very, uh, very interesting thing because um, we are so much attached to this fact that I am the doer in the different modes, right? In the mode of goodness, I am the doer as manifest as how? I'm the doer, but you are in the mode of goodness. Yes, your primary, char primary characteristic is good. Yes, but I'm still the doer. Off. I'm a, very I'm a very charitable person. I'm a good person. I'm nice to others. I... I sacrifice for others' happiness. I sacrifice for others' happiness. Um, and so on. And the mode of passion. It's pretty um, obvious, yes. What is the mode of passion? How does the, how is Ahankar manifest? Anyone want to give some examples? Yeah. I did it. I, 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 I created so many different things. I created this company, I created this temple, I created these cookies, <laughs> I created this prashadam, I created, I dressed the deities, I gave the lecture, I distributed so many books, yes. I, um, you know, I created artificial intelligence and I created, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I created this house, and I created this family, and I created these children, and I created, and I, and I, and I, and so many. The mode of passion creation, yes, Brahma um, is, huh? I'm indispensable, yes, and it's like, this is the Brahma mode. You're in the Brahma mode, yes, Lord Brahma, he's just creating. <laughs> His job is, is, is creation. He's a secondary creator, but that's the thing. And then, you know, this is the, one of the most primary things that you see in the world today. Everyone likes to create, everyone wants to be the, has the responsibility, or rather wants to be the leader of things, right? Unless and until I am the leader, I am not creating, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yes. Um, and then there is also ahankar in the mode of ignorance, which is, you know, then, <laughs> you know pretty much I will destroy everything. <laughs> I, I'll destroy myself, I'll destroy my neighbor, I'll destroy everyone else. It doesn't matter why I'm doing it, but I'll still do it. Right? Um, yes, and I'll find a reason for doing it. Yes. Um, and you will see that the, that, now the, the traditions and the cultures and the, tra and the religions of the world that we live in today are also in the different modes, depending upon who's, um, who has the ownership of leading it, essentially. And hence it is for us, it is very important to keep in mind that whatever we do, we keep in line with what Srila Prabhupada has told us. Understanding his mood, understanding why he was doing what he was doing, Understanding why does Srila Prabhupada want to preach in the Western world? Yes, Paschatya Desha Tarine. Yes, this Tarine is to deliver. What is this deliver? Is to free, is to give. And what is that? So we have to go really deep into understanding. Otherwise, we'll be caught up in our own, or rather, we, our devotion to Krishna, or our, even our service to Srila Prabhupada, will be tinged by our own. Ahankar, by our own false ego, yes. And hence, Oma Jnana Timiranda se Jnana Anjana Shalake, Chakshu Shun Milita Neha you know, Because I'm born in the darkness of ignorance, my spiritual master is awakening me, yes. That is the whole idea, that Srila Prabhupada is waking us up. Our spiritual master, specifically the ones that are holding our hands, are slapping us on the back of her head, probably holding her ears and saying, this is how, yes, you serve, but don't get so attached, or rather get, good, get blinded by your service so much so that you forget why you're doing it. Yeah. So anyways, let's move on. <laughs> Who's going next? Yeah. The false ego is characterized as the doer, as an instrument, and as an effect. 
It is further characterized as a senior active or dual active according to how it is inf influenced by the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. Very nice, right? Beautiful. It is characterized as the doer, as an instrument of doing, and as an effect of doing. Yes, this is the, the, the it is instrument as it is manifest either as the cause or the effect or what actually are the catalyst that makes this happens, happen, yes. The different ways, different people look at it different ways. I will be in corporate, I'll do this. And the other person is, is, is going that the effect of all of this is that this is supposed to happen, you know, this is what it is supposed to, going to happen. And the other person is, I'll be the instruments of whatever is going on. So anyways, so much, I'm pretty sure, very beautiful purport here also, we'll see, yes. Who's next? From the false ego of goodness, another transformation takes place. From this evolves the mind, whose thoughts and reflection give rise to the desire. Phenomenal. Very phenomenal. Yes, from the mode of goodness, another transformation. From this evolves the mind, whose thoughts and reflections give rise to desire. Reflect on this. <laughs> yes, it's good to reflect. I think in the 14th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada is talking about the modes of nature. Srila Prabhupada is um, saying that, you know, uh, speculation on this chapter will lead us to devotional service. And similarly, reflection on this will lead us to devotional service. But what are these desires? Right? So the mind, from the mode of goodness, in you, it, 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 it thinks and it reflects on its own identity. Yes. And based on that, different desires arise. Have you seen that happen in your life? Yes. Can you give me an example? Yeah, the Ayatha Vishabha. Yeah. From, yeah. You, when you once, when we contemplate on the objects of the senses, lust. And when lust is not satisfied, anger arises. When anger is not there, bewilderment of memory, so, so on and so forth. But what are those in your life? What happens? I'll tell you what happens <laughs> all the time. Yes, different things, right? I mean, uh, literally, you reflect on a samosa, you want to have it. <laughs> it's not very difficult, really. <laughs> yes. You see someone having a nice samosa and relishing it. You see someone having a nice cookie. One see someone drinking, see someone having sex. You know, what happened in Ajamil's case? Yes. Basically, all he did was to reflect on what this man and women were doing in, in public, basically. Right? And that reflection, just reflecting on it, is a desire to enjoy in the same way. Yeah, so we should be very careful about what we see. Yes, and it's so dangerous these days. You watch, you know, little Krishna da -da 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 -da, on YouTube, and all of a sudden an ad pops up. <laughs> That ad is like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, where did this come from? And then sometimes even a very small thing, a very, very small thing, a very small thing, it's just a passing thing. And all of a sudden the mind <laughs> latches onto it. They agreed? They agreed? Yes. Huh? It triggered, yeah, it gets triggered, yes, because we are, we come from this, this, the, our, our minds are a manifestation of this false ego. And it's immediately latches on. And then there's a desire, then we want to actually do something with it. Anyways, phew. <laughs> yeah, we can talk endlessly on this. That's right. That's right. Exactly. 25 years, years and years and years. And of course, the Acharya has explained so many different things that there is, you know, there is Bija and there is Kuta and there is Prarabdha. There is all these different levels at which the seeds of desire, the seeds of reflection within our heart are there and so on and so forth. But at the same time, 
let's be careful about how this whole thing starts, right? How this whole desire starts. Okay. And yeah. Who's next? The mind of the living entity is known by the name Lord Aniruddha. The supreme, the supreme ruler of the senses, he possesses a bluish black form resembling a lotus flower growing in the autumn. He is formed slowly by the yogis. Ah, so within that mind is known as Aniruddha. Yes. So it's not that the mind is mad. The mind's thoughts and reflections should be directed towards this guy, Aniruddha. This is the contemplation of the mind. The thoughts and reflections on this personality frees us from the thoughts and reflections on other things. Yes. And so he possesses a bluish, blackish form resembling a lotus flower growing in the autumn. He's found slowly by the yogis. It's very, very powerful. Yes. So use the mind in this form, is the thought. Okay? By transformation of the false ego in passion, intelligence takes birth, O virtuous lady. The functions of intelligence are to help in ascertaining the nature of objects when they come into view and to help the senses. Hmm. That's now, <clears throat> when, the, when the mind um, is, or rather the false ego is now influenced more by the modes of passion, then intelligence comes about, right? Oh, virtuous lady, and she's talking to Devahuti. He's, Lord Kapila is talking to Devahuti. And what are the functions of the intelligence? Are to help in asserting the nature of objects. Yes. And then they come into view, and to help the senses. And what is artificial intelligence? <laughs> to, to help the intelligence. Yes. So, Dhyato Vishaya Pumsha, reflections, but then oh, the nature of intelligence is to ascertain, ascertain, basically, okay, Dhyato Vishaya, what is Vishaya? The object of the senses, right? So, let's just think, um, Lamborghini, I don't know, what do you like, what do you guys like, I know, you are the pure devotee guys, so you don't... <laughs> Rolls Royce. <laughs> Pick something, right? Some new funky tablet, which also has a projector, which can project different things and robots and and um, maybe samosas. <laughs> Let's just stick to samosas, right? <laughs> Gulab jamuns and samosas for for yeah. <laughs> stick. So so we see those, and then the intelligence ascertains the nature of that object. What is the nature of that object? What is the samosa? It, huh? Fruit juice. Fruit juice. <laughs> Something that the tongue is like, mmm, this is yummy. <laughs> yes, exactly. So now, all the intelligence can also think this is something that helps me satisfy my body. The purpose of this piece of food is to, or it can think this is the mercy of the Lord, this is Mahaprasad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, this is Mahap this is the mercy of the Lord. And if, even if it was completely putrefied, it was, it was still, um, it is still Mahaprasad. Yes. Whether it's, whether it's the last pieces of salad left in the in the bowl, or it's a samosa, it's the same thing, because it's the mercy of the Lord. So it's the intelligence that allows us to ascertain the nature of what that object is. Yes, you can look at it so many different ways. I, as an enjoyer, or as a servant, to this prashad, yes, I'm the servant of this samosa. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And then to help the senses, and then the senses, then a go and take the samosa and then we either enjoy it or we honor it. Two options. It helps the senses to either enjoy the samosa or to honor the samosa. 
yes? In my case, the former. <laughs> Before I know it, the samosa has been consumed, finished, right? I'm not even thinking of Vishnu and all that kind of stuff. But for devotees, every bite is an opportunity to relish Krishna. Yes, Krishna says, Rasoham apsukante. Yes, I'm the taste of water. I'm the, it, that taste is, is, that is the saliva of, that's in our mouth, is, is Krishna's grace. If you have COVID, a samosa, a karela, and bitum, and whatever, you know, the worst juice you can think of in the planet, tastes the same because there is no taste in your mouth. <laughs> Yes, for those who have had COVID. Yes, Krupama Prabhu. <laughs> Maybe you didn't. Did you lose your taste? No. Uh, my wife, she just had COVID. She lost her taste for a day or two. It doesn't matter what you eat. It's just the same. But Krishna's grace is that we can taste. Huh? And each time we taste something, we should be conscious that we have been tasting something. It's so beautiful. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can go to the verse. Uh, so let's dig down. So I think we're supposed to read this, and so we'll read this together. Mahatatvad vikurvanat bhagvat virya sambhava kriya shakti rahankaras trividaha samapadyata Vaika Rikas Taijascha Tamasascha Yato Bhavaha Manasas Chendriyanamcha Bhutana Mahatamapi. So again, we'll read the synonyms together. Mahatatvat, from the Mahatatva. Vikur Vanat, undergoing a change. Bhagavat Virya Sambhavat evolved from the Lord's own energy, Kriya Shakti, endowed with active power, Ahankaraha, the material ego, Trividaha, of three kinds, Sampadyata, sprang up, Vaikarikaha, material ego and transformed goodness, Tejasaha, material ego and passion, cha, and tamasaha, material ego in ignorance, cha, also, yataha, from which, bhavaha, the origin, manasaha, of the mind, cha, and indriyanam, of the senses, for perception and action, cha, and bhutana, mahatam, of the five ghost elements, api, also. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Can someone read this, please? I think we read the translation, but we'll read it again. Anyways, who's got that mic? The, the material ego springs up from the ma Mahataba, which evolved from the Lord's own energy. The material ego is endowed predominantly with active power of three kinds, good, passionate and ignorant. It is from these three types of material ego that the mind, the sense of perception, the organs of action, and the gross elements evolve. Wonderful. Let's read the purport. Um, Nimai? In the beginning, from clear consciousness, or the pure state of Krishna consciousness, the first contamination sprang up. This is called false ego, or identification of the body as self. The living entity exists in the natural state of Krishna consciousness, but he has marginal independence, and this allows him to forget Krishna. Originally, pure Krishna consciousness exists, but because of misuse of marginal independence, there is a chance of forgetting Krishna. This is exhibited in actual life. There are many instances in which someone acting in Krishna consciousness suddenly changes. In the Upanishads, it is therefore stated that the path of spiritual realization is just like the sharp edge of a razor. The example is very appropriate. One shaves his cheek with a sharp razor very nicely, but as soon as his attention is diverted from the activity, he immediately cuts his cheek because he mishandles the razor. All right, so it's, 
you know, material energy is daivihiyesha gunamai mamamaya duratya. Very dangerous. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada was one, once walking by the beach. Maybe Kripa Maya Prabhu can explain better, but some devotees told Srila Prabhupada, this is so wonderful, so beautiful. Yes, have you seen? Next to the beach. Very beautiful, nice, nice and serene. And then Srila Prabhupada turned around and said, only from far away. <laughs> yes, don't go into it. You go into this ocean, it's dangerous. It's all kinds of nasty things. So from far away, it looks beautiful. Similarly, material nature is like a razor. Don't play with it. Be very, very attentive. And if you're not attentive, then even when we are practicing Krishna consciousness, we become, we have, it can immediately take us away. The material nature is so powerful, it can take us away. Now, the good thing is neha bikramana sosti pratyavayu There is no diminution. You can't destroy the credits that we have achieved when we perform devotional service, but we can forget. Yes, but we can forget. Immediately we can forget. So, we have to be careful. Yes, be very careful. And how do we be careful? How are we careful? Anyone want to give that a shot? How to be careful? How can, the best way to be careful? Yeah, just hang around with others who are... <laughs> just hang around with, with, with this Sankirtan of devotees, yes, of this association where... And this association cannot be artificial. This association is not just coming together and saying Hare Krishna, Mataji, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, and get too carried away whether you're ca being called Mataji or Prabhuji. <laughs> and then all of these different things. Like, oh. Yes. Yes. You were saying? That's right. Yeah, one, one in thousands. Bahunam janmanam ante gyanavam pram There is out of millions and millions of births, someone might be interested. And out of millions who are interested, out of, there might be one who's actually really searching. But in principle, this association, when we come together, is to really be able to share our heart and say, Prabhu, yesterday I saw this on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and a Prabhu just says, oh, let's chant, let's do some nice kirtan, and jump around like crazy. Why do we dance? We should be dancing with our hearts. Why? Because that's what frees, yes? That's what frees us from these, in, you know, intoxicating contaminations that we see every single day. Yes? We dance like crazies. You know, don't, don't even like try to see what others are doing and you know, dance and like, just... <laughs> you know, it's just dance, let it go. Of course, don't disturb others, you're dancing, but at the same time, dance, yes. Um, even when there is no mradangas, there is no kartals, just the holy names should free us from all these contaminations. That is a, that is a reason to dance, yes. So, okay, let's move on. Nima, can you pass on the mic, please? Can you, can you turn this a little bit this way so that they can read? Oh, thank you. Better? Thank you. Not only must one come to the stage of pure Krishna consciousness, but one must also be very careful. Any inattentiveness or carelessness make us fall down. This fall down is due to false ego. From the status of pure consciousness, the false ego is born because of misuse of independence. We cannot argue about why false ego arises from pure consciousness. Factually, there is always the chance that this will happen, and therefore one has to be very careful. False ego is the basic principle for all material activities, which are executed in the modes of material nature. As soon as one deviates from pure Krishna consciousness, he increases his entanglement in material reaction. The entanglement of materialism is the material mind, and from this material mind, the senses and material organs become manifest. 
beautiful. Yes, this is the sum total of everything, yes. The natural identities are to be the servants of Krishna. Yes, in the previous verses we read that the first, when Devahuti was speaking with Kapila Dev, the first thing she said that I'm not very intelligent. No, I cannot understand difficult things. So please tell me something that will immediately free me. Yes, so it is quick and immediate. Yes, why? Because we are in that situation. And unless we are in that situation, unless and until we do not really realize that we are not very intelligent. That we are in a very, we should be in a humble state of consciousness. That is the natural consciousness of the living entity. Not this ahankar that I am the doer. I know everything. I know how to free myself from the modes of nature. I know I will chant the way I want to, you know. That's not how it is. Yes, that is to be humbler than a blade of grass. Yes. Not that you don't tell me how to chant. I know how to chant. No, I don't know how to chant. Even Lord Chaitanya, when he went to his spiritual master, what did he say? Yes, Murkhami, I'm a fool. This is the Lord himself. He is showing, not just by example, but by his own consciousness, how we should be accepting the holy names. Yes? How should we accept the process of Krishna? I'm a fool. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, what I'm doing. Please. This is Lord Chaitanya saying it. Yes. Please instruct me. And what does the spiritual master say? That's okay. You're, you're a fool. <laughs> so... Just chant the holy names and everything will come. As the first verse of the Shikshashtakam tells us, right? First thing it, Cheto Darpanam Arjanam. Yes, it frees us from our false ego, it shows us from our heart what our actual position is. It's beautiful. It says, I'm just a servant. Yes. Anytime we have any conflicts, any time that we feel that this is not the right thing, this is the right thing, any time that we feel that, you know, I know better, we have to, and this is for myself more than anyone else, we have to really step back and tell ourselves, I am just the insignificant servant of everyone. Get into that mood, get into that consciousness a little bit. Because then, Krishna, unless your spiritual master or whoever is giving you an authority to say, no, you please take ownership of such and such things, one should always be in a very, very humbler position. I don't know how to do all of these things. Yes. I do not know how to chant, I do not know how to dance, I do not know anything. And when that happens, the mind becomes purified. Yes. Then, yes. Yes, he's, his name, when he says, you gave me the name Bhakti Vedanta, but I don't know any Bhakti. <laughs> I don't know any Vedanta. But it is you, my dear Lord, because of which I can fulfill the purport of my name. Yes. Um, can you go up a little bit? <clears throat> so factually, there is always the chance that this will happen. What will happen? That one can fall down and get entangled in the false ego situation. Yes. Yes. Congratulations, Nima. Just keep it there. Just keep it right where you are. It's on the ground. 
माइक प्रभु की जय यस यस देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ वॉट इज फॉल डाउन वॉट इज फॉल डाउन वॉट है वॉट इज फॉल डाउन हमटी डमटी वॉट इज फॉल डाउन मिस्टेक्स वॉट इज मिस्ट लोअरिंग ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल स्टैंडर्ड्स ओके बट सिंपलिस्टिकली वॉट इज अ फॉल डाउन Yes, but what what is what exactly happens there? What is this identification with the false ego? What happens? Yeah, yeah. This is simple. It's just very simplistically, Shila Prabhupada. It's just forgetfulness of Krishna. Yes, this fall down as we forget in all situations. No, very simple. If something happens, something you do something great. great yoga teacher you are a great kirtanier or you make a big temple or whatever else just forgetting that this is krishna the krishna is the ability of man and woman <laughs> and whoever else i have no abilities yes yogyata vichare kachu nahi bhai tumhara karuna sara yes narottam das thakur yes i have no qualifications But you, as Shri Lopraba said, you know, you guys, you know, what are this devotees ask? What are my qualifications? And Shri Lopraba, you have no qualification. Very humbly saying, I made your qualifications, because that's how he saw his spiritual master. Yes, that my spiritual master made my qualifications. I'm making yours, and you are supposed to make others qualified. That is the process of Krishna consciousness. Yes, but any any time thinking that I I'm qualified, independent. That's the forgetfulness of Krishna. That's the false ego manifest in so many different ways. Yes. But when we remember Krishna, yes, what are we praying every day in Damodar? Why are we praying? May this vision constantly appear in my mind. What vision is this? And Mother Yashoda is <laughs> tying Krishna with a rope. So beautiful. so completely mesmerizingly magical isn't it isn't it magical yes a person from whom the mahatatva comes yes he impregnates in the mahatatva and the different universes and so many different things and the variegatedness that we see in every our own not just the bodies with the bodies and millions and billions of creatures just happen by just his seeing material nature that person <laughs> you made a promise <laughs> i'm going to tie you up and she does what do you show that and krishna is crying is crying his mascara is flowing down his cheeks cheeks of a blackish lotus face which are encircled by by the curls of blackish locks of curling hair become red and like bimba fruits due to mother yashoda's kisses <laughs> what more can i describe than this yes. to be actually to be absorbed in that consciousness in so many different past times with the lord jesus and the past times that happen in our in the community of devotees and how the deities are being dressed every single day yes is to be able to appreciate and to remember it is what will keep us away from this mess Yes. And the mind is absorbed in all of this, and then in the service, so what do you do when you appreciate the truth? Is let me help in this. Somehow or the other, let me serve as a servant, as a insignia. Please, can I help? Can I do something to help make this even more glorious? And that involves so many different things, including whether Jose likes it or not, cutting vegetables. <laughs> right. including cleaning the temple including going out on books including as grass as going out and making money so that we can facilitate hosi cutting his finger i mean cutting the vegetables <laughs> sorry <laughs> um yes so many so many different things the entire it just completely changes everything 
how we perceive the same activity changes. Yes, and that's free from false ego completely because my mood is, I'm just a servant. And then Krishna is constantly appearing in my mind. That's the false ego. When we forget that Krishna is Sarvakaranaka, he's the cause of all causes. And most importantly, he's my dear most friend. Suradham Sarvabhutanam Gyatvamam Shantim Rachiti. He's my closest friend. He is my closest friend. It doesn't matter whether I become a worm, the stool of a hog. He's still with me. Who will join us there? Not even Drishtadyumna Prabhu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, he's constant. That is the natural mood. Even Krishna is doing that. Yes, carrying his mother, father's shoes on his head and helping this, that, and that's the natural mood of even the Lord. How much more should we be? Then that's how we conquer the Lord. The the fight in the spiritual world is not who's greater master. The fight in the spiritual world is who's the who's the lowest servant. <laughs> That frees us from the false ego completely. Do you agree, Mother Draupadi? <laughs> Anyways, I'll stop here. We are seven minutes late. Thoughts? And before you start, Venu Bihari Prabhu, um, not just the mic, but if I know there is prashadam waiting, so if anyone is hungry, would like to move on, very welcome to. Chandramohan Prabhu is now taking Venu Bhairi's car and going home. And Venu Bhairi Prabhu is going to walk. <laughs> now Venu Bhairi Prabhu has no car keys. <laughs> we'll first let him ask his question then. So my question is Prabhuji. Uh, Where are my car keys? Yeah. <laughs> no? <laughs> The material world now, Prabhuji, if you take any corporate, like where I work, so they expect me to talk more, you know, bossism. Yeah, yeah. boss, 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 no boss. Yeah, boss. No. <laughs> so otherwise they think that you know, I am a dumb guy. Uh, uh, if, if I work as a sub submissively, they think I'm not fit for this position. So how do we balance yeah. this to No, we are not fit for any position. <laughs> That is true, it is not, but <clears throat> anything that happens to us, whether it's in the corporate world or any otherwise, is purely by the actions of the modes of nature. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with us. Absolutely nothing. Our opulence, our beauty, our growth, it doesn't matter where you are, it is purely run by the modes of nature. Agreed? That is the truth. It is not what the boss thinks. I've seen so many devotees who have been very worried about, you know, how should I present myself? We just present ourselves as devotees. Not by wearing a tilak and this, that, and other, but present ourselves with our consciousness and how we are supposed to act. We don't act any other way than it is. It is you can make a nice presentation without having the false ego completely involved in it. With the complete understanding that I'm just doing this as a servant of the Lord. Yes. Understanding that everything is happening by the modes of nature. I am not the doer. I am not the doer. Whether, whether it's working as a CEO or whatever, whatever company, whatever job you have, or dressing the deities, or whatever else you do. If we think I'm the doer, we're finished. It's the modes of nature acting, period. Nothing else. And so our consciousness should be firmly ingrained that I'm just the servant of Srila Prabhupada. I'm the servant of Krishna. And then Krishna takes care of everything. So what does Sudama Vipra do? 
There's nothing. Yes? What did he do? Just bring a few grains of chipped rice. You know what chipped rice is? Poha. Yes. If you go begging, you should. It's really nice. You should try begging. Has anyone tried begging? It's a really phenomenal experience. Everyone should go begging. At least once. And that's the every Brahmachari should that's the first thing that we, we go begging. We go begging and tell Krishna. Bolo Krishna, Bhajo Krishna. That's Lord Nityan in this mood, right? Yes. We go and beg, please chant the names of Krishna. Yes. But we should go begging also for and the least thing that they give you is give you poha. <laughs> <laughs> or peanuts, <laughs> something like that. It'll give the least insignificant thing. It was really, really cheap. And then Sudama took some poha. And he, one thing, yes, he changed his entire, yes, his house was completely transformed. Anad fired his family and everything, the whole village, everything was completely transformed. And Rukmini stopped him from taking the third one because in the third one he would have given the entire universe to Sudama, <laughs> including Rukmini. <laughs> that is the Lord, just with a little bit. Yome bhaktya prayashati. What he looks at is we are devotion. If we have sincere devotion within our heart, then no one can touch us. Our bosses can't do anything. Within their heart, they'll be inspired to promote you. It doesn't matter. You just pick your heart up. That's the Lord within the heart. Upadrashta Anumanta. He's the one who sanctions every thought. And if he sanctions every thought, he knows, oh, Venu Bihari Prabhu is a nice devotee. Yes, boss's natural constitution, I should fire him. But when it comes out, it comes out as, Venu Bihari Prabhu, please take the CEO's post. <laughs> That's the Lord. We have to be convinced. We have to have faith in that. Till the time we have faith, we have to pray to the Lord to please give us faith and do whatever is necessary in our workplace. But we should understand that, uh, you know, doing that thing is not, you know, changing our consciousness to align with the material world so that somehow or the other we can survive is not the solution. The solution is intensifying our devotional service and really understanding we don't have faith. And to really build on our faith by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Agreed? Any other co corrections, comments? Narsingha Rupa Prabhu Ki Jai. That way only, Lord said, uh, the question what he asked in that, Yad Karosi Yad Asnasi Yad Jihosi Dadad. So whatever you are doing in the office, keep doing but uh, offer the result to the lord yeah so then everything will be you know like krishna centric offering the result to the uh, lord in the sense not you know whatever paychecks we are getting you know give to the lord 